Miles Davis commits to Texas A&M, and in doing so, he sets the Aggie safety room up for success for years to come. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in the Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, another commit, another bird has landed in the nest with four-star safety Miles Davis. So, six foot one, 185 pounds, 346th player in the class, in the 2024 class, four-star recruit, as I said, from Converse, Texas. Um, you know, the, the, the quick breakdown on Miles Davis and what he brings to this football team is – I, the great hands he has, which is, which is a safety. It's not everything, but it's it stood out to me. Um, he runs the routes for the receivers when, when he's in coverage. He's great in coverage, and he's just a ball hawk. I think like he he knows what the quarterback's going to do before the quarterback knows what he's going to do. And I mean, and we'll talk more about what Miles Davis looks like as a player in a minute. But you know, talking about the statement I made setting up the safety room for success for years, now adding Miles Davis to this recruiting class along with Jordan Pride, who of course is the 105th best player in the class, four-star recruit. This is a big time safety room of two blue chip players you bring in. Uh, and I just think you know, bringing in multiple talented player at a position is a big deal because you got to look at it like Okay, those two guys are going to be Manning, are going to be the last line of defense for the Aggies for a long time. Now that you you land these two guys, you know, Pride a, a while back, and then, of course, landed Miles Davis recently, you have two guys, talented players, know the position, play it well, highly ranked guys that are going to be playing safety for the Aggies for a long time. I think that's a big deal. And on top of that, you already have some players in the 2023 class, some talented defensive backs that are going to make this case I just made even deeper. But landing these guys, it it ensures this position for a long time. It's kind of like, you know, if you land um, a safety, like you land a Jordan Pride player-esque player, top top 150 player, 105th in the class, and then you land like a kind of project three-star who's ranked like 897th in the class, you know, you feel good about one guy, but at the end of the day, you, you need multiple people to play the position. So landing two blue chip talented recruits is a big deal. Um, so that that's just the excitement around this is like, you know, these guys can be a tandem for a long time. If potentially there's some guys in last year's class that can be part of that tandem as well. But you know you're landing two talented players who can come in, play the safety position for the Aggies, and play it well. So – you know, the big thing about Miles Davis, about landing Miles Davis that stood out to me is the fact that he chose the Aggies over Texas. That that That's exciting. You know, Landon, there's been so much beef on Twitter these last few days, weeks, about the Longhorn fans, the Aggie fans going at it, talking about recruiting and, and, and stuff. And so, you know, landing a guy that the Longhorns wanted and just kind of saying, tough, you know, deal with it. I love that. It's always more fun landing a guy when your rival wanted him. And and that's what we have. That's the case we have here for the Aggies landing Miles Davis. And I mean, like I said, so watching the tape, he had this one play where he was, um, you know, kind of behind linebackers, lined up where safety would be. And then you see a receiver kind of cut across the um, in motion. And he goes to line up. He was going to go to the outside, but he pushed the cornerback out and said, you take the outside receiver, and he took the slot guy. The slot guy ran that route where, like, you kind of use the outside receiver. The outside receiver cuts in, and you use that guy as, like, a pick man and then run almost like a kind of like a mini wheel route, that kind of play. So, in essence, a pick play, but to get, get a guy open for kind of a, a go ball down, down the corner of the end zone, in the corner of the end zone, and Davis was able to work around the pick the outside receiver was, in essence, setting and make the play for and, and pick it off. And it was one of those plays where it was just like, wow. I mean, if you do something like that at the SEC level, that's going to be on Sports Center the next day. That's going to be da-na-na. I mean, that's a big-time play. So it really 
I think that was the play on the tape that I was really just like, dang. Uh, but I mean, in general, it's like, you know, you talk about good hands on a, on a, on a safety or a cornerback. It's not, I mean, who cares? I mean, you know, a cornerback has a good career and they have like 10 interceptions in their whole college football career. Right. I mean, and that's even could be a little, a little high, but like, so it's not something like this is going to be something that happens on a, on a game to game basis. But Davis did have, he was, it was an elite. Like he looked like Tavon Austin back in the day at West Virginia. That's what miles Davis looked like returning these interceptions. I mean, he was bobbing and weaving and ducking. And I mean, he, he can dodge a wrench. He can dodge a ball. It was pretty impressive what he was able to, to do once he got the football on his hands after picking off an opposing quarterback. That really stood out to me. And he had good hands, too. There were a couple interceptions where, like, normally, you know, as they always say, you're playing safety or you're playing cornerback for a reason. Um, and to me, it's like that wasn't the case for Davis. He, the, the hands were impressive. He, he's, you know, he was able to, to hold on to some pat, hold on to some errant throws and take them back the other way. So, like I say, while those two things aren't going to be used a ton, it, you know, if think about it like that, he gets six interceptions in his Texas A&M career and he houses five of them or something. I mean, that's a big deal. So um, that's something that definitely stood out to me. And like I said, um, the decision-making and just the ability to kind of look up at the quarterback, see what the quarterback was going to do. And just, I mean, in essence, run, you know, he, he knew what the quarterback was going to do before he kind of knew it's like he was able to see, I think this guy's going to go to this receiver and he was able to step in front of somebody, pick off the ball and take it back the other way. Um, you know, and that's what I talked about. He was running the routes for the receivers. I mean, it really felt like he had such a great understanding and grasp of what the opposing offenses were trying to do. And that's what led to a ton of interceptions on this tape, a lot of, a lot of pass breakups, good tackle. That was the thing too. You know, I love it when these cornerbacks are, are not scared to get in and help tackle. And that was the case with Davis, you know, big guy, like I said, it was six one one eighty five, but he looks, he looks bigger than that. He's long and lanky. Um, and I love long length, long lanky safeties. And that's what stood out to me about Davis was how long his arms are. I mean, he's got the big, long, you know, alien arms hanging down to his ankles, um, which is good because it helps you break up passes. If the receiver's a little bit past you and you have to jump, you can get a big paw on it. Uh, so yeah, Davis, the tape stands out truly of a guy who's deserving of a, of a four-star rating. And, and back to like what I said, it's just knowing that you're going to have Jordan pride, and miles Davis, man in the safety position for years and years to come for the Aggies is a big deal. I mean, that's just landing multiple blue chip recruits at a single position is not a thing. A lot of power five, even power five schools can say, I mean, if you're not Georgia and Bama and maybe like Ohio state and Michigan and some of these top end schools in each conference, you're not landing like two blue chip safeties in most classes. You're not ensuring each position with blue chip recruits on a year to year basis. And that's what the Aggies have, done so far in this class and done throughout the years. So, I mean, that's what leads to victories is continuing to bring in more and more talent throughout the years. And that is exactly what the Aggies have done at the safety position so far in the 2024 class. The class does still currently sit at ninth after the addition of, after the addition of Davis, which, you know, I, I, I was a little, I figured they'd go a bump up a spot just because generally when you get a recruit, especially a blue chip recruit, you move up a spot. So stayed at ninth. And of course, the time this comes out tomorrow, I mean, they might have moved down one or up a spot or we land another recruit. That's just how it goes. So if it's changed, but at the time of this recording, the Aggies are currently sitting at ninth um, overall. And, you know, so that's what stood out to me. Now, we will talk about this a little bit next week. We have a full schedule today, but. Um, some of the, the 24 seven sports and on three and some of these different recruiting sites updated their rankings. And some of, we were talking about how good the Aggies blue chip ratio is going to be for this class. Some of those recruits kind of sank down to the three star level, including, you know, the, uh, tight end corner and the quarterback Maddox. And, but then you had a guy like miles O'Neill who kind of bumped up. So, uh, some shifts in both directions. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit next week on Monday's episode, but um, this class is in a good spot. Like I said, folks, you know, ninth overall class, it's in, a, it's in a good spot to be successful. So this class, just like we talked about uh, with John Garcia the other day, I think it's going to end up being a top uh, five class in the country. So landing a guy like Davis puts you in a better spot to do that. So big time addition. Good to see Miles Davis coming down to play his college football in Aggie land and deciding to come play for the Aggies rather than those dang Longhorns. 
J.D. Pacal, a guy who works for On3, is someone I really respect in the industry, an up-and-coming guy. I really respect him and what he does. Um, shared his thoughts on the Aggies this season, and they were pretty positive. We're going to talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be able to get back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. So J.D. Pacal, like I said, a guy I really respect in the industry, up and coming guy, just, you know, you talk about somebody knows ball, this guy knows ball. I mean, truly, you, you know, you watch his show, you watch him, you watch him talk about some college football. It's pretty impressive. Um, his knowledge of the game. So I really like listening to him. Uh, but he had his thoughts on the Aggies. So I'm going to read his thoughts. Um, and this was written up in an article on Aggies Wire. But it was, you know, I, and I ended up going and listening to Pacquiao talking about the Aggies after I read this. But um, we're just going to read through some of these quotes and then kind of break them down. So the first thing here from Pacquiao is, he says, the talent is there. The way I am looking at this, they have as many four and five star guys as just about everybody else they're going to play in the country. They're going to be competitive from a roster standpoint. I love Connor Wigman. I love Evan Stewart. Having a nice Smith back is huge. They got a lot of ingredients on this roster. Then he goes on to say, if they put it together, they're going to be a team that I think competes in the SEC, and they're going to put a dent in the college football playoff race. Just look at who they play. A couple more quotes here. He then goes on to say, whether or not they compete for the college football playoff or not, who knows? But I'm telling you, the roster itself is enough to be very, very dangerous when it comes to the 2023 season. So those are the quotes, you know, Pacal ended up going on about this Texas a and roster. And like I say, you know, he talked about the boomer bust factor, which is something we've talked about here a good amount on Locked on Aggies. But I think it's genuine. The boomer bust factor on this roster, it, it's the upside, the ceiling and the floor we've talked about too. It just, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to these things that I, beat writers and others, believe are going to improve and are going to happen. It depends if they happen. I've talked about, I think, the three things that have to happen for this Texas A&M football team to have a successful season, which, frankly, I think I would deem as eight or nine wins. Def, I'd like to lean more on the nine win side there, but we're just going to have to see what, what pans out. But so eight or nine wins. And... So the three things that have to happen, I think the three main things, Connor Wigman has to develop into who we think he's going to. The offensive line has to take a big-time step forward slash stay healthy, and then the defensive line has to stop the run. I think if those three things happen, I think, frankly, even if two of those three things happen, you know, if Wigman takes the step forward and the offensive line is good but the, it, we struggle to stop the run, I, I still think – I think if all three of those things happen, this team could be competing for a college football playoff appearance. If two of those three things happen, you know, then we're talking eight wins, but still I think the potential is there for a, a boom season. But like we've talked about, and this is another thing I've said, I think when it comes to national media, a lot of the issues people have with this Texas A&M football team is more the coaching staff than the players and the, and the recruiting, you know, the recruiting stuff and all that, it's more about the coaching staff. People like, um, I said this the other day, but big game boomer, um, whatever your opinions are on him to each their own, but he kind of put something that I thought was a little bit funny. He made a list of like the thing that could get in the way or, or, uh, for each college football team. And for the Aggies, it was Jimbo Fisher. So, you know, that stood out to me. 
Um, and I mean, if you, whatever you're, like I said, whatever your thoughts are on him, but I, I still think that's a good talking point because it's like a lot of people talking about football in the case of Big Game Boomer or, or journalists, national media journalists are concerned about this coaching staff and how the dynamic is going to work with Coach Petrino, with Coach Fisher, how the offense is going to flow. Is it going to be better this season? And it, I, like I say, so I think the narratives surrounding this team are more that than like, will Wigman have a better season? Will he develop into the second year guy many imagine? Will this defensive line stop the run? How good can Walter Nolan be? Like, those aren't the stories line, the storylines you see a ton of. It's more stuff like around the coaching staff. So, you know, I, I think hearing that, what stands out to me about that is the fact that like we know the players are there. If if the Petrino hire works out like I think it's going to, and he takes this offense to another level. Goodness gracious, I think people need to watch out for the Aggies. I mean, so genuine when I say that. I think people really do need to watch out for the Aggies. Uh, you know, so here in J.D. Piquel, like I said, a guy I really respect in the industry, a uh, really up-and-coming guy, talk about that he thinks is, this is a team, that it's a boomer bust team, but he, he, he thinks it could be a boom. Like he thinks it could go either way, but he really likes the Aggies. He likes the roster. Um, and I just, like I say, I think hearing people say things like that, I like hearing national media members acknowledge they might not love everything. They might not love the coaching staff, but they still do. They know the roster is there for this team to be elite. And that's what I like to hear because it's reality. If coach Fisher lets go of the playbook and says, coach Petrino, do your thing, which I've seen many people agree with me in the comments about that. If that happens and those three things I talked about, stopping the run, offensive line, take a step forward and Connor Wigman take a big second year leap. This team can be elite. I'm really, I, I'm gladly put my foot down and, you know, put my, say that. I can say that with all the confidence in the world because I genuinely believe that's reality here. So, like I said, it's good to hear somebody, a, re a real good person in the industry, saying some positive things about the outlook of the 2023 football season for the Aggies. All right, folks, we now know exactly every game that Texas A&M basketball is going to play heading into the 2023-24 season. This is talking more about the non-conference schedule. Let's look at the games and talk about what it means for the Aggies this season. Right here, coming up next on Locked On Aggies. So, basketball, you know, we talked about the SEC schedule the other day. Now, of course, we don't have dates and stuff on that. All we really have is um, who we play, where we play them. But now we have the full non-conference schedule, which before we get into it, the reason I think this is a big deal is because, you know, some of the issues with Texas A&M has been the strength of schedule in the non-conference schedule on top of that, you know, kind of dropping some games to teams you really shouldn't. And I think that has led to some people really sleeping on the Aggies until they kind of prove it in SEC play. And this season, Texas A&M is going to have the opportunity to prove it before they get into SEC play. And I think that's a big deal. So let's just run through this schedule. So you start off against Texas A&M Commerce on the 6th of November then you go to Ohio State on the 10th of November. That'll be a fun, fun ball game. Then you got SMU on November 14th away as well. Then you got Oral Roberts at home. Oral Roberts is a team member, I mean, in baseball and basketball has kind of come out of nowhere to be a, a, a team you got to watch out for. You know, they had that um, Max Abmus kid who was the leading scorer over there. He transferred, I forget where. But, um, you know, it's a good it's a good ball club, good basketball team. So it's a scary you know, non-conference opponent to kind of – a scary non-Power 5 team, but, you know, a good resume builder. Like we said, a definite team you could see in the tournament. Then in November from the 23rd to the 26th, the Aggies are going to be going to play in one of those tournaments, like in-season tournaments, um, where there's gonna see, they're going to see lots of good competition there. Another great resume builder. It's a great thing. Then the SEC ACC Challenge, where the Aggies will head to play Virginia at their place. Then you've got DePaul at home. Interesting game there. A little Big East matchup. I'd like to see that. Uh, you know, a conference notorious for some good basketball. So that'll be a fun ball game. Then you got Memphis. That's another great resume builder. You got Houston on a neutral site at the Rockets Arena. So that'll be a good, uh, a fun ball game. 
Then you got Houston Christian on the 22nd and Prairie View A&M on the 30th. So, you know, um, and the, 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 those games were in December. But like I said, I think the positive, you have a lot of games. You got So you got, let's look at some Power 5 schools in here. You got Ohio State. You got Virginia. Um, so you got a handful of power, five, a couple of power five schools on here. You're going to play a couple power five schools at that uh, tournament that we talked about from the 23rd to the 26th in November, and you get a couple good non, um, a couple good road tests. And like I said, the Ohio State game, SMU game, the Virginia game will be a fun one. Um, the neutral site game with Houston. So there's some tests on this roster, and we've talked about. Um, there's some tests on this schedule. I mean, and we've talked about the fact that this is an old team, older guys, a lot of guys that have been there, done that, played, played in big time environments. And I think that's a good thing. I think you're going to see that lead to more victories for the Aggies this season, because it's not like a Kentucky team that's young, hasn't been there, done that yet. You know, a general uh, John Calipari team, I mean, because that's kind of like, you know, we I always talk about like when I talk about using the transfer portal in football, we talk about Lane Kiffin. If I talk about a young basketball team, it's John Calipari. Um, but you know, the Aggies are not young. They've played in tough road environments. Coach Buzz Williams knows how to win there. Your older guys, Boots Radford knows how to win there. Um, so I do think it's going to be good. And, and, and you know, you take care. You beat Ohio State and you beat Virginia. Man, you're you're gonna you're putting yourself in a position where if you have a good SEC, um, you know, conference schedule, you're in play for a really high seed in the NCAA tournament. So, folks, I'm really excited for some Texas A&M basketball. I love opportunities during kind of football time to talk about it just a little bit. Um, so, you know, that's exciting. I can't wait to really get into that um, here in the in a few months. So, really looking forward to some Texas A&M basketball, and I think the Aggies are in for a really good season on the hardwood that is going to do it for today's episode of locked on aggies as always i appreciate you all tuning in it really does mean a lot to me folks i am hitting the road heading to nashville for sec media days so coming up next week we're gonna have a lot of fun content surrounding that can't wait to bring that to you lots of cool stuff coming up so be prepared for that next week we're gonna have a lot of fun stuff coming to you here from locked on aggies like I said, that's going to do it. Everybody have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.